Okay, we're back, we're live, we're here on Think Tech Tech Talks. I'm Jay Fidel, and we are enjoying New Valley School today. Oh, and we're, we're, it's an intersection of that school and the science fair and STEM, courtesy its principal, Sean Tajima. Uh, thank you, Sean. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Great principal. Okay, we got three young men, and we got three others there in the gallery, and we're going to switch them out of the half. So first we're going to find out, uh, let me introduce Parker, Nicolo, and Matthew. Parker, say hi. Hello. Nicolo, say hi. Hi. Matthew? Hi. I knew you'd say that, yeah. Okay, <laughs> so now you guys participated in the science fair uh, in early April, yeah. uh, and I want to know about why. I want to know about your projects. Okay, first Parker, uh, why did you participate in the science fair? What was your project? So um, pretty much we did ours on marine debris because we wanted to raise awareness and keep our beaches and ocean habitats nice and clean. Ah, okay, we're going to come back to that, just getting the lay of the land, ocean habitat, all right? We're going to find out more from you. Nicola, what was your project and why My did you do it? My project was about native Hawaiian plants that prevent water runoff, so I want to um, spread the knowledge about which Native Hawaiian plant is best for preventing water runoff, so maybe it should be planted in the watershed and um, different places where there's a lot of water, like um, maybe wetlands or in the mountains. Okay. And I chose to do that because it actually affects us here in Hawaii because it's Hawaiian native Hawaiian plants. Okay. And Matthew, tell us about your your science project, your you know, your science yeah. fair project and why you did it. Why you did that one. So I was actually par partners with Parker and like he said we oh, did a project okay. on marine. On habitat. Yeah. yeah. So I thought why why is there all this debris on our beaches? So that's what inspired me to continue researching this issue. <clears throat> Okay, now let's get let's drill down a little bit in this. First, we'll talk about Parker and Matthew's project. Um, so, how much time did you put into it? Mm. <laughs> let's see. Like one, we we collected debris over a period of one month. Yeah. And then we like analyzed the data, so it was kind of like a month and a half. Yeah. So why did you pick each other as partners? Did you know each other before? Yeah, we, we knew each other since fourth grade. Oh yeah, okay. Is this the first time you went to the science fair together? Oh yes. Yeah, important. What did you think of the science fair? It's quite something, isn't it, in the convention center and all? Yeah. Did you meet a lot of people? What did you think of the judges? Tell me about your experience, Parker. Well, actually, at first we just did it for fun just to have the experience because it's only mandatory in 7th and 8th grade. So we wanted to have the experience so it's easier for next year. And then we ended up getting into districts. And how much of that do you agree with, Matthew? I agree. He agrees with all of it. Good, good job. You, you mentioned next year, so let's talk about that for a minute. What's going to happen next year? You guys going to do it again? You're going to do it together? You're going to do it in the same subject? Tell me about your plan. So, like, um, actually, next year it's mandatory and everyone has to do their own, so no partners and. Same subject? Mm, we might. Habitat? I might change mine. Yeah. I might, I might. I was thinking of maybe like thinking of a solution to the marine debris <laughs> issue. But I also wanted to like see see like new things, just over new like I guess issues too at the same time. So. So you're committed. Yeah. Kind you're of gonna you yeah. you guys are science guys. You're all science guys. Yeah. You're gonna be. I mean, I know it's early in the sixth grade. How old are you in the sixth grade? Twelve. Okay. It's, it's early to make life decisions, but maybe it's not early to make life decisions because life goes by so fast, you might as well get a handle on it, right? So uh, tell us about your project now. I want to know more about it. I want to know, you know, um, exactly how you implemented your idea. Okay. So I actually looked up some interesting science fair projects. So there was this one about different environments and climates that can affect the plants. So I try to make that how um, I try to made that so it's relevant to us here in Hawaii, so I added native Hawaiian plants that prevent water runoff, because that's one of the problems here. Did you have to, uh, did, you, did you have a, uh, somebody who helped you, a mentor? Did you talk yes, to somebody? I actually um, talked to a native Hawaiian plant expert. Ah, really? Yeah. And who was that? Give him credit. Shout out. Yeah. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> How about you guys? You have, did you have a mentor? Did you, you consult with people? No, because we... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, it's, you know, not always necessary. Yeah. yeah. So let me let me talk about the hypothesis and the conclusion and the methodology, right? You, you know, you you know that science fair is all about presenting, presenting. Yes. Okay, Parker, you first. 
the hypothesis, the methodology, and the conclusion in one minute. Um, our hypothesis was if we do a beach cleanup at Sandy's Beach and Baby Makapu, then Sandy's Beach would end up having more marine debris in the oceans and all along the beach because they have bigger waves, which is more powerful to um, push it onto the beaches and keep it over there. And our hypothesis ended up being wrong. Oh, so, really? <laughs> well, that's what happens sometimes in science. So, um, Baby Makapu had more marine debris, and we're thinking because it had smaller waves, but it was more consistent, and it ended up pushing <clears throat> in more like small pieces of rubbish, like plastic and bottles. Mm. Matthew, what about the, the thought process? Can you talk about that? You know, you guys, you get into science, you have to learn scientific methodology yeah. and thinking, you have to learn critical thinking, yeah. which is not, sometimes that's hard. Um, what did you learn about your own thinking, if you can tell me about that? And we have to think of like how we'd be able to like collect debris from both beaches and then it would be like accurate. So we decided to, I guess, select an area on the on the two beaches and not change those, so that we are, I guess, our results are accurate. Yeah. All right, I'm turning to you now, um, Nicolo. Um, what about the judges? You interacted with the judges, right? Yes. Uh, how was that? How did you feel about them? How did you feel about the interaction? Did you hold your own? So, actually, the judges were very nice, and they were very complimentary. So they not only told me good things, but they helped me. They gave me feedback so I could become better, which is always helpful for next year and later on in life. Yeah. So they gave you more than just judging. They gave you feedback. Yes. They gave you suggestions. And huh? there were um, experts in the area, so they knew what they were talking about. Yeah, that's great. It's great to have experts. You know, science these days is all about collaboration, not just across the street or at the university or another school, but it's around the world. And when I talk to scientists and they sit in these very chairs all the time, there were a number of scientists were here a couple of hours ago talking about uh, geophysics. Um, they collaborate all the time, everywhere, with schools and academics and researchers everywhere in the world. That's the way it works now. So what did your parents think? Did they help you out, Carter? Parker, rather? <laughs> um, actually, my mom kind of forced me to do science fair, and I'm happy that she did because I got a good learning experience, experience out of it. Yeah, did they help you in the project? Yeah? Did you have the chance to, you know, get feedback from them about the project? <laughs> yeah. Who made the poster board? Did you make it? Um, oh, you and Matthew made it. Yeah, we, we worked together to, I guess, lay it out, and they kind of, yeah. like, Provided the area that helped, really, they, I guess they kind of helped us, like, I guess, think of how it would, like, I guess, attract to everyone. Everyone would be open to every, every idea that was on the board, I guess. Yeah. So you guys are in the sixth grade. What is your advice to the guys in the fourth and fifth grades and the girls? What would you say to them about your experience? Would you encourage them to do the same thing? Would you teach them something different? Well, what's your advice? Let's start with you, Parker. I would say for them to try it out and just give it a shot because you're going to have to eventually do it in 7th and 8th grade, so that will make your experience even easier. Okay. And uh, Nicola? Um, well, I would say even some parts you might feel like you want to give up because it's too hard or you have to do a lot of work. Was it hard for you? In some parts it was. Yeah, okay. But overall you want to stick with it because you have a good learning, you can get a good learning experience and you can go further, like you could go to states or district and you can also um, get feedback from judges too that can help you later on. Yeah, Matthew, what would you, what would you, advi <coughs> what would you advise those kids? I guess to be open to every topic because you might find something that you like, I guess that you're, that's intriguing to you and you might want to continue on in, in that subject in life. Yeah. Well, it's very important, and I want to ask you guys about whether you see careers. You know, you told me all before that, um, that you know, the science was important for you, but um, what do you see yourself doing? I know it's early, but give me a shot. What do you think? <clears throat> going to be a PhD? Uh, going to be a PhD in some subject or another? What subject do you think it might be? 
<laughs> It'll take a few years. And you can change your mind along the way. <laughs> I don't know. All right, you'll see. It will evolve. Nicolo, you have an idea? Yes. Oh, so okay. since my um, project was about native Hawaiian plants, I was thinking of maybe being an environmental engineer to work in the conservation, to work in conservation to help protect our lands in the U.S. Okay, conservation is good. Does that mean you'll stay in Hawaii? Yes, because we have a lot of endemic species here and okay. endangered species. Are you ruling out the possibility of going for your Ph.D. on the mainland? Maybe. He's not ruling it out. I know it's a possibility, yeah. Okay, Matthew? I was thinking of doing something in engineering, like anything engineering, because I find it fun, like I guess finding solutions, thinking of multiple ways to solve an issue. Yeah, there's a lot of gratification in solving problems, you know? You have a problem and you wrap your mind around it and you work at it, work at it, work at it, and there's a solution, and you feel great. So what about Hawaii now? You spoke about this, Nicolo, a minute ago. Uh, and I'd like to ask you first, what about Hawaii? What good does it do, Hawaii, that you guys study science? Is there a connection? Is it all for you, or is it for the community also? Well, I think it's for both, because it impacts the community, because um, if we pollute the water, or it can eventually lead to polluted drinking water, and it can damage food chains and destroy native species. and also, if we don't take care, if we don't take care of it, individuals can also um, be impacted because of maybe there's certain areas where there's places where there needs there needs to be more modern technology or something that can that will affect those people to make them to make that area stronger or can make it weaker. Okay, hold that thought. Don't let go of that thought. Matthew, are you worried about uh, sea, sea level rise and climate climate change? Yeah, because I guess like Hawaii, or tourism is a big, I guess, industry here because like the beaches. And if there's like a lot of debris on the beaches, people would be, would be like, oh, why is there so much debris over here? And then they'll think, why don't we just create a solution to solve it? You guys are great. Okay, Parker, you close. You have 30 seconds to close. All right. Um, tell us, um, you know, your general impression about how this affects the community and how it affects, you know, the people you know, your family, your friends, everybody in Hawaii. So personally, we, me and my family usually go to the beach a lot. Sometimes we'll go to Sandy's and the tide pools and um, swim at Hanama Bay. So I think that cleaning the beaches will help preserve that and keep it here and more generations will have this opportunity. You guys are great. Parker, Nicolo, and Matthew, thank you so much. We're going to take a, a break, and we're going to rotate in the three more, Natalie and Sky and Francis. We'll be right back. Okay, bingo, we're back. This is Think Tech Tech Talks. I'm Jay Fidel. It's the three o'clock block, and we're talking with uh, New Valley School. Three more students there. 
under the tutelage of its principal, Sean Tajima, who makes this kind of stuff happen. And I'm so happy that he arranged this show for us so we could talk to not one, not two, but six of you guys, all of whom participated in the science fair. Okay, and we have Natalie to my left, and then Francis, and then Sky. Great to have you here. Say hi. Hi. I knew you'd say that, yeah. <laughs> okay, now I, I noticed this is not too amazing, but at least two of you are, are women. Yeah. Two, two of you are women. And so the question is, women in science? I thought women didn't do science. Do you do science? Yeah. And how committed are you about science? Um, I'm really committed about science because um, I think it's important because it will help the world in the future. So I want a job that will do that. So like, I'm thinking about being a software engineer. That's great. Okay, and Sky, how about you? <clears throat> um, I think that science is very important. I think that it helps our um, community to get better. And I also think that science is one of the main things that we use in life every day. Yeah. What's your favorite science area, your science field, your subject in science? What do you like best? I like earth and environmental sciences. Ah, okay. Oh, that sounds like SOWEST at the university. You know what SOWEST stands for? School of Ocean and Earth Science and Technology. It is world famous, and it's right here in our midst. And if you studied there, it would not hurt you at all. You would be participating at the highest level of science in the world on those subjects. Okay? How about you, Natalie? What is your favorite subject? Um, I like math and science, so and I like computer. Like, Computers. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna find out about your projects in a minute. Okay, Francis, what about you? Well, I'm al I'm also like Natalie. I like technology and like I also like math and science. Yeah. So I want to like work with technology and yeah. Yeah. What 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 school what courses have you had in school that prepare you for that? Well, I'm. So well, we had a career day, um, a long time ago, but um. I I went to this technology um, guy who um, who talked who talked about um, how he um, edits and like films and directs um, um, commercials mm. for yeah. Mm. Are you into that? Yeah. Oh, that's what we do here—not films and commercials, but just films. Mm -hmm. And we do all these talk shows with guys like you. Yeah. So what somebody said before that the science fair this year permitted, um, it was with Parker before, science fair permitted um, partnerships this year, but next year you have to go by yourself. I'm not sure how that works, but were any of you guys in a partnership with someone else in your science project for the science fair this year? You were all alone doing your own project by yourself, is that what happened? Um, I actually wasn't in the science fair, but I was in other STEM events. Okay, well, let's talk about that. What other STEM event were you in? Um, first Lego League Robotics, Math Count, Science Olympiad, um, Young Einstein Night. A lot of stuff. And the Pythagoras Night. Yeah, it's just the kind of this thing when you go to sleep at night, you have sugar plums of science dancing in your head. Yeah, because <laughs> um, yeah, I do. It's okay <laughs> to have that. <laughs> How about you, Francis? Well, um, you, do you have a project in the science fair? Oh, well, I didn't do. I didn't really do the science fair. Um, I I did. Um, in our in class, we did this project about um, how how we can change. We made these cars out of um, there's either um, the fan car, the rubber band car, and the the what was it called? The, the mousetrap car and mm. I picked the fan car and I had to um, talk about that and what I changed about the car was um, was changing was was cutting the axle by um, making it shorter so I can um, so it can go faster oh, and um, the shorter axle it goes faster yeah well that's well, like a discovery isn't it yeah but I thought well um, some some um, some parents asked me, um, what if like you made it a lot more shorter? Well, I thought if it goes a lot more shorter, it won't go as fast because um, cause if the wheels are too close to each other, it can hit each other and yeah. Loses stability, yeah. yeah. So my hypothesis was right. All it's right, correct. yeah, and it was correct. Yeah. Okay, well that's something. 
you're probably following the whole thing about autonomous cars, you know, and uh, Uber and, and uh, Lyft and all that. You're waiting for them to come here, aren't you? So am I. <laughs> so are we all. <laughs> okay, Sky, what about you? Is there a project in the science fair? If not, where? Uh, my project was in science fair. Um, it was about alkaline batteries, and the purpose of my project was to see if the chemicals in an alkaline battery, if they were exposed to a plant, if it would kill it. Exposed to a what? To a plant. A plant? Yeah. A battery in a plant? Yeah. Now that's a new idea. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't believe what I was hearing. <laughs> tell me how that works, and tell me what you found. Well, I cut open a battery, and then so I can get all the chemicals exposed to the plant. And then um, I tested it for a 15-day period and waited to see if the plants would die. And the reason that I chose this project was because um, I remember one day my mom, she threw away one of the batteries from the TV remote. And then that got me sort of thinking, like, what happens when they go into the environment? Do they, like, harm anything or do they kill any plants or what happens? So, yeah. So, what you, so your hypothesis was there was a relationship and did you prove it? Was there a relationship? Um, well, I think that my testing time was not long enough, so my results were inconclusive. Ah, uh, inconclusive. That's okay. There's a yeah. lot of science that results in inconclusive. So what is your plan for next year, Sky? Um, uh, well, actually, next year I'm not going to be doing science fair. Oh, <laughs> you're going to <laughs> English literature? No, I'm actually moving to a different school, and yeah. they don't do science fair in 7th and 8th grade. They only do it in high school. Oh, okay. So that, that opens a whole new subject then. So Niu Valley is a special school then, huh? Because mm -hmm. it has STEM, it has science in the 6th grade. And wow, what, how do you feel about that? Natalie, how do you feel about it? Are you charged up about that? It's just a good thing because you like science, right? So here in the 6th grade, you get a chance. You don't have to wait. Poor Sky is going to have to wait. Oh. Well, I can do some testing at home. All right. Yeah. I know you will. <laughs> so, Natalie, how do you feel about that? How do you feel about New Valley Science? I think it's really good because it offers a lot of in-school and after-school programs for people to learn more about STEM. Yeah. So, uh, what do you mean after school? You can come around and do it after school, too? Yeah. Like, they... Um, allow you to go to first Lego League Robotics. There's also VEX Robotics, but I didn't participate in that. And they also had math counts after school and science Yeah, oh, that's great. Francis, you participate in that? Well, um, I only participated in the Einstein's Night and the Math Night. But um, the, for the Einstein's Night, I think I, I only did it because, well, I don't want to take things for granted because I think that some schools don't have don't have like these nights and mm -hmm. like that. So um, I think I should I should do it because I can get some experience and so um, I don't take advantage of it. Yeah. Okay. So um, you're heading into what? Information technology, video technology, yeah. audio technology because they're inextricably intertwined. We know that here. Without audio, video doesn't mean much. You know. Yeah. You've got to have them both, yeah. So what, what's your career plan? I mean, how do you see yourself in, oh, 10 years? Because in 10 years, you're going to be 22. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't, well, I don't think, like, I don't, I'm not going to be, like, this uh, editor, director, and stuff. I kind of want to be a lawyer, too. Okay. But it's either, um. That's like me. I do yeah. both, yeah. Well, cause, it's um, possible. Because I've been thinking about it because me and my sister argue a lot, and <laughs> I usually win, <laughs> and then even my parents, I usually win. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> That's scary. <laughs> well, as a right brain and left brain, but you know, you can use both sides too. Yeah. <laughs> you heard it here on Think Tech. Okay, so <clears throat> I asked the other group this, this question. I want to ask you guys this question too. What is your advice about science to the kids who come after you, the kids who are younger in the grades after you? Natalie, what would you tell them? They're out there. See, they're, they're, out there. they're out there watching you. So what do you tell them? What's your message to them? So try to learn as much as you can and take every chance that you can get to participate in a STEM event. Okay, Francis? 
Well, I think you should do it, do it all the, the, the night, I mean, all the, yeah, just don't take advantage of it and you can get lots of experience for this year and in the future. Yeah, okay. And Sky, um, tell them, they're right there. <laughs> <laughs> I think that you should take every chance you have because science is really important. And I also think that it'll give you lots of experience. So maybe you can see like what you want to be when you grow up when you're doing this, or you can like find new interests that you never had before. Yeah. yeah. So let me ask you one other thing that I asked the other group too, and that is, you know, we're talking about you guys, your individual situations and your individual studies and plans for the future. But what about the state? Have you thought about that? I mean, there's a lot of conversation around about how science is very important for any community. I had lunch with the vice mayor of Beijing one time, of Beijing in China, and I said to him, Mr. Vice Mayor, it's so great that 29% of your college graduates have studied engineering. And he said, yes, Mr. Fidel, thank you for saying that, but it's not 29%, it's 59%. And it's probably more now, I think. But the kids in China study science, okay? So what does it mean to the community, to Hawaii, uh, to the country, that kids study science? Do you have a feeling about that? Um, I think if kids study science, they'll have an early start so they could continue learning. And when they're older, they'll have enough knowledge to actually make a difference in the world. Yeah. And we can make a difference. Yeah. Us guys, right here, yeah. Francis, what do you think? Well, I think science is really important, and I think all children should start start doing it now. So in the future, you can they can know everything, and yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, we move into the 21st century, and everything around us is technology. Yeah. I mean, everything we're all, we're driven by it, and sometimes mm, too much so, sometimes too little so. Sky, what do you think? Do you have a comment on this? Um, <laughs> I think that if kids keep studying science, there will be new jobs that there haven't been before. And I think there will be more technology to help our society grow. OK. So how can you guys focus? This is my last question. <laughs> how can you guys focus on the, on the science aspect? of coming into adulthood in this community. I mean, is it a matter of playing video games? Because some generations before you have spent all their time on video games at 2 o'clock in the morning. Which is, <clears throat> I'm not saying that's good or bad. Well, I am saying it's not so good. Um, <clears throat> or getting involved in social media to the exclusion of everything else. So some people think that's science and that's technology. What do you guys think? Is that science? Is that technology? Or is, um, or is what you are doing and the study of science and reaching for the, you know, the frontier of science, is that more, how are you going to play this out? Are you going to do social media or something else? Um, probably something else. Yeah? Well, they got science and social media, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I get a thing from the MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, every morning tells me about the most incredible you know, inventions and discoveries. So you can get that too, it's free. Francis, what do you think? Well, yeah, me too, something else, because, yeah. <laughs> yeah, what? Oh, well, <laughs> well, I think. I mean, if you want to make it yours, you've got to, put, you've got to pay attention, and you've got to take your own time and study in your own way to learn for your own mind, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, OK. Sky, you have thoughts on this? I think I'm probably going to do something else too. Yeah, something other than social media. I'm yeah. so happy to hear that. <laughs> so you guys are the generation after the millennials. You're not millennials. You're going to invent your own thing. And you're the ones who right now, you know, you're in the time when people in this state are looking at you and also Parker, Nicola, and Matthew looking at all of you and saying, you are the guys who are going to go forward. You are the guys who are going to fix it for us. You are the guys who are going to save Hawaii and save our state. What do you think about that? Um, can you can you undertake that burden? Can you meet the challenge? Well, sort of, kind of. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, Francis. Well, yeah. I think it's really yeah. <laughs> okay. We're getting completely you know unambiguous answers here. Okay, Sky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, there you have it. They are going to save us. <laughs> thank you all. Thank you, Natalie and Francis and Sky, and thank you, Parker and Nicolo and Matthew, and New Valley, New, New School, and of course, its principal, uh, Sean Tajima, who arranged this, uh, this group today. Thank you, all of you, and thank, thank you, Sean. Appreciate your effort and coming down, and appreciate your work in science. Don't stop now. <laughs>